do. Uh, in the last couple of updates, they have been quite a stickler about having all of your uh, existing backups disabled. Uh, and not just backups, but backup copy jobs, replication jobs. So uh, the installer is basically going to check for those things uh, to have already been accomplished. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to allow uh, the backups to uh, disable here and so it looks good I'm gonna do the same for the backup copy jobs just a note here you will see anything that's not scheduled you won't see the uh, the red indicator saying hey it's disabled because it's not scheduled so nothing should be running uh, so indicator that everything is disabled uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, close Veeam Backup and Replication Console. And I have in the downloads, I have uh, Veeam 11 downloaded as an ISO file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the ISO file. And there we go, we've got our binaries. I'm going to run this as administrator. Always a good place to run any installs like this as an administrator. So uh, there we have it. We've got uh, Veeam Backup and Replication 11 splash screen uh, that comes up. Click the upgrade. It's smart enough to know this is already a Veeam server, so I'm going to click the see what happens here. And what I may do is intermittently pause the video if, if some of the process is taking just a bit to spin up. Okay, so the license agreement, we accept, we accept third party components license agreements as well. Uh, we're gonna click next. The server is basically showing us uh, the currently installed version. So. You can see I'm running uh, Veeam uh, version 10 at, the, at this time. So I'm going to uh, be upgrading those components. So now what we're gonna do is just click next. And here we go, we've got provide a license, which uh, basically what I wanna uh, leave as the default here because it recognizes I have a, vi a valid license already installed. So I'm just going to leave that and uh, notice if you don't have a license, just click next to install the community edition. So it's really nice. It's the same installer. Uh, basically, you know, says, hey, you don't have a, an official paid for license. So we're just going to activate the uh, community edition. So kind of a nice feature there. One install uh, services uh, all of those different uh, variations of the uh, product. So we're going to click next. And now we see the uh, system configuration check. So uh, interestingly, as you can see, a couple of components that are now required uh, that were obviously not required when I uh, installed version 10. Uh, and I'm seeing here some .NET Core components. And of course, .NET Core is the, the new cross-platform uh, solution from Microsoft. Uh, most of us are now familiar with uh, PowerShell Core and it's built on top of uh, .NET Core. So it looks like I have a couple of components here that I need to download and install. And really uh, handy, uh, the installer has a button that we can uh, just simply click uh, to install those missing components. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click the install button. And a little bit jumpy on the button. There we go. So as we see, uh, it's automatically enabling missing features. So it's gonna reach out, pull down the components and actually get those installed for us. Uh, and there we go. We have very quickly, no uh, video magic there. Uh, you saw how quickly that was real time uh, that those components were uh, pulled down and installed for it. All right, so now that our system configuration check has passed and we've got green uh, check marks all the way down, which is a good sign, 
Uh, we're just going to uh, click next. Ah, and here we have our service account. Uh, so I am going to populate what my existing service account is and uh, let the installer roll with that. And just as a note, uh, I am using a domain admin account for the lab environment just to make things super easy. Um, I didn't create a dedicated service account, but if this were a production box that was in a production environment, uh, definitely use a dedicated service account that has a extremely long password uh, that's dedicated for uh, this particular Windows service. So. Now we're going to click next. All right, so our next uh, configuration that we need to verify since this is an upgrade is the SQL Server instance. So it's going to automatically read the existing instance that we are using and the database that's currently used for Veeam uh, backup and replication. So I'm not making any changes here. Uh, this is the configuration that I, I want to keep. I uh, notice uh, connect to SQL Server using Windows authentication is what I have selected. Uh, so depending on what your business and technical requirements are, you want to make sure to configure these settings uh, accordingly. So we're just going to uh, click next. and it is validating. And now we have uh, a dialog box here, Veeam Backup and Repl or Veeam Backup is the Veeam Backup and Replication Configuration Database. Uh, connect this installation to the selected database. So this is a question for us. If required, database will be automatically upgraded to the version you are installing. So it's telling us just kind of a friendly informational slash warning that hey, this database is what you say you want to use for V11, and it will be upgraded to uh, all of the requirements needed for V11. So just uh, a note here on the next installations. So now what we're gonna do is just uh, click the yes button to confirm. And another informational here, this product version brings the following changes to the backup copy jobs GFS retention policy to align it with primary backup jobs. So definitely be aware of the changes that are uh, being made. Uh, they are uh, introducing a few things having to do with GFS. So uh, definitely make note of that, especially if you're, uh, again, if your business and technical requirements uh, revolve around uh, GFS for sure. So again, continue with the upgrade, yes. So we're going to select yes here. And now a, uh, a dialog box that actually has been in the last couple of versions, I believe, I can't remember if it was version nine that introduced this, where it will automatically upgrade remote components automatically. And this can be a time saver, especially if you have remote uh, backup proxies or other components that uh, realistically in a, in a larger production environment you will have. Um, this is a nice feature that when you upgrade uh, your primary Veeam server, it's gonna go out and update all of those uh, remote components automatically. So I'm going to uh, select update remote components automatically, and we're going to click the install button. And there you have it. We are now underway with the upgrade to Veeam Backup and Replication V11. So what I will do is uh, pause the video. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with just sitting here watching the uh, upgrade take place with services stopping, components being copied, and V11 components uh, spun up, services restarted, all that good stuff. So uh, be back in just a few minutes. All right, guys, so I uh, just unpaused the video, and as you can see, I now have an installation succeeded on Veeam Backup and Replication version 11. So I'm just going to click the Finish button, and uh, it's opening a help documentation 
I'm going to close out of the installer. I'm going to open Veeam Backup and Replication 11 console. Click Connect. And I am now into the Veeam Backup and Replication console. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to enable all of the jobs uh, just to make sure everything enables. We're going to uh, monitor for uh, backups that they happen as expected and are successful. Uh, so uh, that's one thing we're going to do. And also I'm going to show you guys the help and about. Whoops help about so as we can see we are on v11 so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and this uh, quick walkthrough of how painless and easy it was to uh, upgrade my veeam backup and replication server from version 10 to version 11. Uh, click like on the video subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more virtualization how-to videos to come thanks guys